first or the last time we do this, but we have a, a special guest with us today, um, Dan Bladen. Dan is the CEO and founder of Chargeify. Uh, Chargeify is a portfolio company of minor ADV, and some amazing things are happening in the world that have led to some even more amazing things for him and his company. So, Dan, welcome. Thanks, Keith. Maybe the first or last, depending on if it goes well or badly. I'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs> so, um, we're going to talk about the future of work, but yeah. you're going to lead because um, this is your life, as, as, as they used to say. Uh, so, off you go. Well, we, I remember in February or January, February this year, Keith, we were talking about our narrative together for the next round of funding here at Chargeify and then COVID struck and a little bit about Chargeify from a history perspective, we had built up until, uh, up until COVID and well, continue through COVID, up until COVID in kind of February, late February, early March time, an enterprise management platform to enable wireless charging to scale. So wireless charging, we believe is going to do for power, what Wi-Fi is done for connectivity and over the next 10 years, it's still set to grow from 1 billion to 32 billion devices. And we believed, and we believe that it needs cloud management to uh, get to scale. So we had some great, great customers like Okta, Accenture, Hewlett Packard Enterprise that were deploying wireless charging with us and with our cloud management. And then uh, particularly in offices that we had some stadiums as well, like the Chase Center um, in San Francisco, Atlanta Falcon Stadium. They were all deploying smart wireless charging with us. Um, and then COVID struck and everybody's at home. And so we were just discussing, I think, late spring, early summer as well, kind of how do we do we either wait around and wait for the wave of our market, the tide in our market to rise again, or do we choose to go after um, the wave that's that's happening right now with with the future of work that I know you've been talking about with many others over the last um, over the last few months, and we decided as a board, as an as a management team, to go after um, the wave of of the future of work, and really we accelerated a whole number of our adjacencies that were already happening in in the business. Charge if I had focused on kind of what we called enterprise whales, a term that you'll be familiar with, and by whales we mean um, companies with more than 30, 40,000 employees um, across the world. And then we also had a, a subcategory that we called shiny dolphins. So these are companies that could graduate into Wales as well. And we were going about winning those. Um, and when COVID... So, so, so ju just, to, just for those who are less familiar with the, um, the lingua franca of enterprise sales. <laughs> so, so you're still dealing with buildings. You were before, right? Um, you, you you were upgrading the experience of being in a building, and you still are. But what's changed with COVID is the nature of buildings, I guess. Yeah, so buildings have changed forever. We don't think there's going to be a building left untouched by, by COVID. And over the next six to 12 months, a whopping $22 trillion worth of corporate real estate, we think is going to be reimagined and, and repurposed. And as part of our solution with wireless charging we had built into a piece of hardware in prototype version uh, effectively a ring of lights and we'd had customers that were before covid wanting to do hot desking or hotel desking or flexible desking um, and attaching a scheduling system to this ring of lights to dictate uh, sorry to donate the the status of that desk is it booked who's it booked by is it engaged etc cetera, etc cetera. And then when, when COVID came, we found that the interest in that product by a number of our key partners in particular just rapidly accelerated. And so we went head first into developing that product ourselves, uh, ramping up for production uh, on that product. And as we went through the journey of developing that product over the summer, we found a significant amount of market pull saying, hey, what's the scheduling system that I'm going to use for this? How am I going to get bookings for my staff that are telling me they only want to be in the office two to three days a week now? How are they going to book into these desks, book into these spaces? So we made a decision uh, to double down again into this future of work kind of narrative and opportunity and decided to build our own, our own effectively full suite of workplace management software, uh, particularly around spaces that people work from and the flow of people in and out of those spaces, which we call Chargeify WX. 
So, um, so let let's drill down a little bit. So, what what is the essence of the new use of of, of shared space? What what's changed? Well, <laughs> I think there well there are probably very few things that change everything, right? But the move from office to remote only or remote slash flexible will be one of the biggest changes I think that civilization, quite frankly, has has ever had. And I, I do think that what has happened with expectation around office working, um, people going into the office day by day from an expectation perspective has completely reset. And I honestly don't think the companies, companies have control anymore in terms of, I don't think they're gonna be the ones that dictate the terms in which and how people work going forward. I think it's very much gonna be the employees that uh, dictate how and where where they work so that's so that's really changed and i think it's taken i think it take a few, took a few months um people were concerned when covid struck obviously we everybody went into lockdown and then the the hierarchy of needs as it were as people started and continued to come out of lockdown was um how do i have a safe return to a safe space so there was all sorts of uh, rules going in place around cleanliness, you know, cleaning of surfaces. Uh, how do I facilitate a safe return for uh, for a safe place for my uh, for my employees? And we had a bunch of you know some of our product team's friends and others giving feedback to us. And when they were going into organisations, they were told to put a red post-it or a green post-it on the desk if they'd used it or not. Um, so there's all these different rules that came around around the safe safe return to a safe space. But I saw that, and I think we saw that at Chargify as being very kind of short term, that's kind of putting a plaster or a Band-Aid on a problem for now. But what I'm really, really interested in is what kind of the second order consequences are or second factor consequences are for this completely flexible new way of working. And to kind of put it into some real context, and we've received more RFIs in the last two months than we ever have done in the entire history of Chargeify. And they're from Fortune 500 companies that are, I can't say who, but dramatically rearranging and reshifting, repurposing their space. So just to give one example, a large, hugely well-known company headquartered in New York, they're reducing their desks by 48% as they think about this new pattern of working. Well, there's some very public um, announcements on that. And Microsoft um, made some very public announcements about moving to uh, remote working. I know Dropbox has said it's gonna change all its offices into what it calls hybrid offices with no fixed desks. Yeah. You know, there's announcements all over the map actually, but the, the clear common factor is that you won't have in in many offices you will no longer have a fixed desk that is yours with all your stuff on it um other people will be sitting at the desk that you come in to use prior to you being there um who that was and whether the desk was cleaned after they left uh, which used to be a non-issue now will become an issue yeah so i know that you've been addressing um you said 21 trillion dollars worth of real estate has to be repurposed to be capable of supporting these new behaviors and your product offering speaks directly to that and i'm thinking maybe we should show the video of the light ring and yeah how it works yeah absolutely let's let's go ahead let's do
There we go. We're back. Nicely done. So, um, so basically, you've you've created um, the ability for people to feel confident that they're using a space that's ready for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what, uh, like with many things, right? COVID's accelerated <laughs> trends that were already taking place. So, um, over seventy four percent of organisations around the world were already experimenting with flexible desking. And this product of ours had been kind of in R&D for about 18 months prior to this summer. Um, and we really hadn't had, I hadn't had come up to my level, I guess, at least internally, enough pressure to go ahead and commit to building it. And then when we, we saw the opportunity this year, coupled with, the, as you said, Keith, the, the status indication, is it clean? Is it booked for me? Um, those types of things became huge uh, value adds, particularly in that safe return to a, to a safe space. And um, we worked with an extraordinarily large co-working company on on the concept of it uh, 18 months ago. And they really kind of were really investing for this to, to be a success on their end. And that was off the back of them doing huge studies on flexible desking, in particular hot desking and, and hoteling. And what they found that in order to make the system work, they needed more than just booking and scheduling. They needed to get the check-in and check-out process of different desks and rooms right and correct. And what they found is that there wasn't enough value exchange for individuals, employees to check in and check out of a desk. They would have to open an app and manually check in or hope that a Bluetooth beacon had checked them into a desk or scan an NFC card or tag in order to check into a space. Whereas here, we're offering something that's very much in our DNA, which is the wireless charging that acts as a carrot in order to give you that value exchange. And then we obviously know when somebody leaves that space as well that they've left and depending on how uh, rigorous the facilities team want to be about turning over that desk again in time and then that desk can be can be turned over in time so that's that's kind of been phase one for us around safe return for a safe space and as we re announced that product um, it kind of really captured the imagination of people as they kind of you know one of the words we've used in cloud computing has been elastic storage for ages or software defined networking has been another way of talking about effectively how you can throttle up and throttle down and expand capacity for different compute terms and now people are thinking about how they can do it with space but that means physical things like desks need to become digitized in a way that you can read and write <laughs> to them so let's talk a, a little bit about um the broader implications of this. You talked about checking in and checking out um, and availability. So clearly what you've built here is primarily a software platform that has some hardware upgrades. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the software side of this. And if a customer wants to repurpose a building, do they have to refit with hardware or is there a path to um, to getting the check-in, the check-out, and the safety, and then upgrading later? Yeah, so there's three different tiers that we're offering, basic, professional, and premium. At the premium tier, we've got the hardware and the software. Um, professional, it's software only, but it's locational aware software. So we have an idea whereabouts that user is inside of the building, and then we're able to effectively, on a floor plan, show how they're interacting with spaces. And it, depending on which level of software you have with us, it can be as simple as we know that you're inside of that building and that you've booked a desk for that day. We're going to push a notification to you at 9.30 when your booking starts and say, have you sat down at that desk? So that's as simple and as low touch as it can be. Or we can work with some of our Wi-Fi partners and utilize some of their um, spatial analytics uh, and, and geo settings to understand which floor, which neighborhood people are in, and then make some uh, presumptive kind of software only check-ins. So let's, let's just show that in a video. Um, yeah. The workplace has changed forever. And through smart wireless charging, Chargeify provides safe, touchless experiences across workspaces where the smartphone is used like a passport to access and interact with spaces like desks and rooms. Employees can easily identify clean and available spaces thanks to our wireless charging spots with colored light rings. It works like a simple traffic light system, 
where green means clean and available. And in one touchless action, they can book and check into a desk simply by placing their phone to charge on a Chargeify spot. Our solution also enables touchless check-in to available meeting rooms, instantly launching video conferencing in one seamless movement. No more cables or touching shared equipment, but instead giving employees a quicker start to their meetings and the confidence that the space is clean and ready for use. Chargeify can help space planners optimize the use of spaces. Hyperlocal usage and occupancy data provides insights for smarter decisions on improving the use of space and safety. Unused spaces such as no-shows can be identified in real time to free up rooms and desks, increasing availability. And with cloud management of the fully secure network of charging spots, you get maximum uptime for complete peace of mind. Give your employees confidence with touchless, seamless experiences across your workplace. Chargeify, powering amazing spaces. So, um, sorry for the pause there at the end. That's my fault for putting too much in the video. But, but, but you know, when you, looking at that, I can imagine that there must be hundreds, if not thousands, of customers who either own, lease, or manage buildings that would want that kind of functionality today. Yeah. You're, you're a startup. You're, you're young in your life. How are you thinking about um, opening this up to that very large number of customers and how quickly can you do it? What are your plans? <laughs> well, Dan at chargefry.com is how you reach me. Um, but so we are, for the, as I said, there's three different tiers. At the very, at the basic tier, we're gonna be offering self onboarding. So we believe that the key to this and key to workplace facilities and HR teams um, getting this type of facility up and running, particularly now that vaccines are coming out, people are now really putting into place um, concrete plans about returning to the workplace. And uh, we believe that getting your building online and your building managed is really important. So we're gonna have a self onboarding, it's gonna be coming out very soon, self onboarding on our website. So you can get your building up and, up and running. That means adding your floor plans, adding your schedules, and we'll talk about policies, I hope, in a minute, and how that all works. Um, so that's gonna be how you can get started, you know, near enough today. Um, but from a from a scaling up perspective, Keith, as you know, we are talking with about 30, 40, 50 of the largest companies in the world right now. We did um, over a dozen demos last week to, well, we did, we did over a dozen, <laughs> and all the companies I think we spoke to are in the top 25 in terms of valuation. Uh, of companies in the world right now. And so it's a, it's a huge task for us. And I think as a startup, right, we're trying to balance the how hard and aggressively we go at this <laughs> perspective. Um, and what that means for us is making sure that we're protecting our team as well on a day to day basis right now. Um, and that means protecting them from burnout, because everybody's going hell for leather at this. And uh, we received a we received a quote from um, one of the well top three companies in the US in terms of valuation wise last week. Uh, and um, they said it blows the competition, it blows the competition away, the type of thing that we've developed. So it's um, it's been a huge year as we've repositioned uh, the company uh, based off of pure scale or wireless charging to attack this, this new opportunity. Um, and it's funny, you know, the more we change, the more we can't, can't change fast enough as well. So you get customers going, hey, can we have this feature? Can you add this thing? Um, so, yeah, we're really gearing up for it in quite, in quite a big way. So it seems to me like what you've built is what I would think of as the, 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 um, the human building interface, the interface between humans in a building. It's kind of like an operating system for the use of the building. Yeah, um, it includes safety, but it, it also includes logistics and functionality um, and analytics and statistics on the building's use. Yeah, it, it seems very comprehensive. It definitely seems COVID proof, <laughs> as in it, it's not going to become any less relevant as the disease disappears. Now, tell 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 a little bit about what it will cost. What, it, what presumably this is a subscription model of some kind. Is it? 
people based? Is it desk based? Uh, how how can a customer think about buying this? Yeah, so it's SaaS based. Um, uh, it's based on users. So depending on how many users you have, one of the things that we're really trying to do with the software is make working from home or working from the coffee shop or wherever you are doing your flexible working outside of the office. They're as much a user in our ecosystem now as the person that would, might still come into the office every day. So that's how we're going about putting this together from a user perspective. Um, it's a low single dollar fee per user on the basic end, um, all the way up to um, low double digits on the premium end. And it obviously scales depending on how many years and how many users you have you have on board. Um, so that's that's very much how how we think about it. And what, on the on the I guess wanting to make sure everybody's involved. We're on a um, we're on a <laughs> extraordinarily large bank's RFP call on on Friday afternoon last week. And one of the the features that we've got coming that really captured their imagination was a feature that internally right now we're calling Cadence. And Cadence is effectively a way for you to pre-schedule, pre-book a bit like a spin class or a bit like a gym class. Hey, when you gonna when are you gonna come in? Who are you gonna come in with? Because that's the key thing. If you look at Google, Apple, anybody who's talking about returning, um, they all want to return to get that collaboration. And Microsoft just released a great study this week where they said there's been a 20% drop in how innovative managers think their companies are being because they're not being able to collaborate as effectively remotely. Um, and so this has been a key, a key piece of learning for us over the last few months is how can we help and perhaps we'll get a chance to talk about it in a minute. How can we help um, companies get the right cadence of employees coming in at the right times, um, but also get that collaboration going uh, as well? So the software will give them that level of control so they can manage uh, cadence. What about um, proximity? Yeah, so proximity is, proximity is what I'd call my first kind of tier, my first hierarchy of, of are you referring to, I guess, spatial distancing, Keith, there? Is yeah, that... how many people are allowed to sit around a desk and has it been, um, is there too many? Yeah, yeah. So one of the cool things you can do in the software, a bit like if you imagine a, a drafts board or a chess board, um, you can have COVID settings put in. So you can say, hey, the, and you can have some spacing put in. So you can say, hey, right, these desks are on average, you know, uh, two meters or I don't know four to six feet across and um, so every time someone books a desk on desk number two in a bank of 12 we're going to make desk number one three then up next to each other and then the ones opposite we're going to make those red on the platform and on the light rings as well so nobody can book that space so you can enforce that distancing uh, Chelsea, from Chelsea football club could have used that this weekend when <laughs> Allowed two thousand people into the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Chelsea's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, excellent. So, what else do you want people to know about about this moment? Um, obviously, remote working is locked and loaded, unlikely to change. They'll, they'll, they'll probably have different opinions about you know, the balance between days in the office, days not in the office once COVID has gone away, but nobody doubts that it's going to change. Um, some people think all offices will become hybrid. Others think offices will close down and get repurposed as condos and sold. Yeah. And yet others believe nothing will change. We'll go back to the old ways. Um, probably all of the above is true to some extent, depending on who the, who the uh, owner uh, or manager of the building is. Um, but what else would you like people to know? Yeah, and I'd be fascinated to know yours, your thoughts as well, Keith. Um, I think, as you said, it's 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 yes and yes, yes and yes. I think in terms of all the above statements, I think we've been, um, you know, in terms of Gartner's hype cycle, I think there's been a ton of hype about you know you can work from absolutely anywhere, and that's something that at Chargeify, you know, we're also we're also adopting. We've made a decision in London to allow to make our office in London completely uh, flexible desking. So that's what we're doing. We're reducing the size of our, our space in London. We've decided to keep our main office in Belfast. We're going to continue to invest in there. Um, and then we've got people dotted all, all over in different parts of, of, of the US as well. And um, so I think that, you know, we are in we've, we've gone through the trough of disillusionment in terms of the fact that remote working isn't going to work. It is absolutely going to work. 
Um, but I don't think we're going to be at this zenith, everybody completely remote uh, for, for the most part and, and for most companies. Um, I've been speaking with a number of friends in, in the valley here where, and they're working for, you know, IPO'd companies that may have, may have floated publicly two or three years ago. And they're probably at five to 10,000 people now. And they're really struggling from a manage, uh, middle management layer. They, they're quite frankly saying we can't wait to go back because we're struggling at this middle management layer, getting the pro productivity out of our team, people burning out, culture not working. So there's definitely something about in the size, shape, internal culture and wiring as to whether you can, uh, whether you can go fully remote or somewhat remote slash flexible or not. Um, I think all of the above are likely true, but I do think that we're not going to like an elastic band snap back to the way we were. All the expectations have been changed. The ways of working remotely have been proved that you can do it. And quite honestly, we're in the worst version of flexible working possible right now. <laughs> and I think it's going to feel a lot better um, once the vaccines are here and once people are going out again. I think it's going to feel completely different this flexible way of working than it does where it's forced upon most people right now. Yeah, I think my my view is that uh, people tend to gravitate towards things that make their life better. Mm. Um, uh, COVID is a driver for a set of behaviors, but what happens when you adopt those behaviors is you learn the things you like. I'm sitting at home now. <clears throat> my wife, who is um, uh, uh, a long-standing employee at Crunchbase is two rooms down. <laughs> um, to be honest, um, it's really pleasant. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, we have three kids. Um, the oldest is 19. We're doing, there's homeschooling going on. Um, so it's not without its challenges, but it's there's a lot of great aspects to it. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to easily want to give those up um so i so uh, you know if you, if you're running a building and you want to retain your employees i do think the onus is going to be on you to make the building uh um fit for purpose and if fit for purpose means um uh, uh it it's basically a drop-in office for teams or individuals that need to be there for things that have to be done face to face then uh, you know, the software and the services that that building offers are, is going to have to reflect that. So I yeah. think what you've done and, uh, you know, people watching might not know this, so I'll say it, but you've basically taken an existing idea, which was to upgrade the office for the use by human beings, um, which was wireless charging as a service <clears throat> and managing all the infrastructure that goes along with that. And you have, uh, through the COVID crisis, um, you know, very, very largely expanded the definition of what upgrading a building means in the context of what the building has to become. So yeah. um, you're one of those great examples of a company that's flourished during COVID. Um, um, and, you know, with my investor hat on, I, uh, my fund in the UK is an investor in charge of fire. With my investor hat on, the question I always ask is, what's the end game? Yeah. The answer in my head is, hundreds of millions of people uh, in hundreds of thousands of buildings being able to work together uh, and use the building appropriately uh, that, that wouldn't be true without something like what you've built. So it, it, it should be a very large end game. Yeah, oh, it's absolutely ginormous. I find out a different part of it almost every day right now. I mean, you talk about some of the, I mean, we had an all hands meeting two weeks ago and we were talking about some of the societal impacts that flexible working has. You know, a number of my friends, you know, they've gone, you know, let's say they live in, well, one of them does, I'm thinking, the guy in my head I'm thinking about, he lives in New Jersey, he works for a large bank, uh, he commutes to Manhattan normally, he's saving three hours a day. And you know what, he's a lovely guy. <laughs> and his equation in his, in his head is, I'm gonna give one and a half of those hours, so half of those hours to my work, extra that I'm not on the commute now and I'm going to give another one and a half hours to my family and like that's huge right if a family can have do the math the family can have an extra what nine days of dad being about a year or something like that that's huge um, and then from a from a employer's perspective as well 
let's say on average that, well, I know it is on average, a desk in a large city, depending on what city is between one and $2,000 per employee. Um, it's absolutely ginormous, the amount of money that can be saved on the other end as well. If you go, if you treat, if you can treat space in an elastic way that you might treat cloud storage. And I think that the opportunity there is that it's really hard to do that. Like it's really hard to get this combination of what's physical and unmovable digital. And that's where some of the hardware comes in and the premium end. But then on the, at the professional and basic ends, like there's things like cadence that, you know, this guy, uh, this RFP that we did for a customer on Friday, they're wanting everybody to put in their PTO into the cadence. They're wanting to understand like when people are going, not necessarily everything about people to be doing, but uh, they're really wanting to understand from a cadence, like what their future space needs are gonna be. So for example, Keith, let's say that you're in the marketing team um, you might subscribe to the marketing leader's cadence, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays inside of the office. Um, Keith, you and I, we might be friends. We might like to go out to the local British dive bar in Palo Alto on a Thursday night. So you and I are going to create a personal private cadence, which is Brit dive bar. And we subscribe to that. Right. Um, but there's. They want to know if they're going to have these one of the big things that's coming out has been accelerated through COVID in space has been the idea of neighborhoods and zones so marketing have their neighborhood engineering have their neighborhood or zones and not necessarily defined defined exact desks but they have their zones where they hang out and so you know companies are wanting to know right if this many people have subscribed to this marketing cadence for zone five on floor 30 then but if they haven't signed up for that zone or that cadence this week, then can we shift that to engineering that have got oversubscribed for that week? So there's all sorts of demand, uh, response, load balancing stuff that we were doing anyway on the enterprise management side for, for wireless power that we're kind of pulling much of the, the protocols through in, into here that I'm, I'm quite excited about. I like that concept, load balancing a building. Yeah. And, and so you're really working for the building, for the individual, and for teams. Yeah, and, and it's the individual that I think is where the focus has to be, because without the individual, none of the other things matter. And what if we've done our job well, I think that what will, I'd love part of Chargerfly's legacy would be to demote the office into a tool for the employee not an end in and of itself, right? And an, an office should be a tool for where the employees can get their best work done, or uh, it's not an end in and of itself. And so I think that would be a measure of our success as to how we how we help define that. Um, but it's all about the employees. And quite honestly, a whole bunch of um, enterprise experience for employees um, in the offices has been forced upon them. Hey, download this app on your personal device. Hey, install this software on X. And it's, it's, um, it can be a bit big brotherly. And what we've really tried to do with our new mobile app, our Chargefy WX mobile app is effectively to marry the much of the thinking behind it has been, how can we create an app that people are used to, that they'll get immediately, but they'll also feel empowered about it. So what we've tried to do is Airbnb meets Ticketmaster for the office and that's one of the really interesting cool things that we've tried to do here is really empower those and get that collaboration going as well with friends and with colleagues in different departments and uh, another rfp that we we responded to recently in new york they actually wanted i think you might be fascinated by this key they they not only wanted to list the available buildings that were their own companies that they had access to. So let's take my friend again, for example, he might have access to a dozen buildings in downtown Manhattan and one in Brooklyn, but they also, but he lives in New Jersey. So they also wanted to have the local co-working companies that this large bank had deals with. They wanted those desks to populate inside of the app as well. So he could go to a Notel or he could go to a WeWork that they shared a license with, which again, I think is a really fascinating, fascinating move. So it's not just the operating system for a building. It's an operating system for the individual needing to use spaces that are shared. It's a big part of it. It's a big part of it for sure. So, if you're interested, uh, this is uh, Chargeify's website. It's chargeify.com. 
Um, and as Dan said, you are going to be able to um, self-serve and onboard it soon, soon. Uh, to become a customer of the company. But uh, in the meantime, uh, reach out to them uh, and get into their process because as a small company, they have to prioritize. And if you want to be on the list, uh, move fast. Dan, I think um, we are stretching the patience of the listeners if we talk any more today. Um, thank you for being available for That Was The Week Founder Stories. Thanks, 